The Sound of Money with Santosh Siru. Hello and welcome to an amazing episode of The Sound of Money. This episode of The Sound of Money is very very special to me. Okay, and as you can see on the screen already, we have a uh, possibly the youngest ever guest on my episode of my podcast The Sound of Money uh, in these last few years. And you must be wondering how come uh, you know uh, we can see a very young face on on this on a business show, right? And and I and I have reasons for that. In fact, I came across uh, my guest. I'm going to tell you his name a little later. I came across my guest as I was flipping through uh, LinkedIn, and I did see a couple of posts about him, about his uh, coming upcoming book. And what I was very surprised was he was not into the famous five or you know whatever the Gen X is now into. but he was into investments investment as in value investment i was like wow he was just 14 then uh and 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 that was when those posts had started coming and i have to read you know a lot more about it and uh, well uh, coming on my this podcast of uh, in the january of 2024 is a very young talented and a very bright mind joining me from singapore He's uh, Ruday Chala. Hi, Ruday, and welcome to my episode, uh, the pod- podcast, "The Sound of Money." Hey, hey, that's a very um, gracious introduction. Thank you. Most welcome, yep. uh, Ruday. So, Ruday is now sixteen, but when I connected with him, he was fifteen. So, we were taking it was taking some time for me to have the you know the kind of uh, uh, interview scheduled uh, with him because he was also in the midst of his exams. He had his travel. and then we said okay let's catch him in december and that's how we started recording this podcast so riday is now 16 and he's from raffles institution in singapore uh, he has authored a book on value investing now this is titled worldly wisdom now worldly wisdom is what you can see he just showed us right this book is yet to come it's going to be a best seller i can guarantee you this coming from a guy who is now 16 but remember he started writing this book at age 14 right so that's very important to note and I, and of course i'm just like you and me uh, you and everyone out there watching us are very keen to know how come at age 14 you know he has already gone into this space so we're going to talk to him about that uh he also runs a podcast by the same uh, name on his uh, youtube channel and has a blog titled rudeychala.com so that's again very interesting do visit that now of course you may ask me oh is there anything beyond investing at that age that he does of course like any other young boy would he is also into cricket he better be into cricket eventually he is an indian right he's also into football and playing sports of course uh, you know uh, badminton and a lot a lot engaging into reading i think that's very very important and playing indian instruments like tabla and uh, handpan wow that's that's interesting we'll talk about that as well but what are we here for to know a uh, lot more from ruday about his journey into investing in fact when i say journey he's just 16 right is just i think uh, you know at the beginning of this academic year he's just stepped into his 11th grade in singapore so ruday my first obvious question to you is at age 14 how on earth did you get into this amazing space of investing if you could share sure so firstly i'd like to thank you thank you for having me here and doing this uh, interview um regarding the question so uh it was purely by chance i stumbled upon it by chance and i'm very grateful for that um so basically what happened was uh i was at the dinner table it was mm. i think early 2020 um and we had the covid virus um spreading everywhere uh I was talking to my parents, or rather, my parents were talking to each other about um, stocks. And at that point in time, um, all over the world, 
the news was stocks stocks going down yeah. stock market crash etc yeah. etc so that got me very interested because what is this thing called stocks that people hype up so much and why is it so important um so i asked my parents um casually what what stocks are and my dad explained to me that they are essentially small small ownerships in a business but i didn't really understand that too well so then my dad uh, recommended me to read one upon wall street by peter lynch so um i think that's a great book i started out with it that was my first book and then from there i just kept on reading more and more and more books out of curiosity and i realized that this is something that i really enjoy and this is something that um gives me a lot of pleasure um yeah. reading about it uh and then from there um i also had one of my dad's childhood friends uh dwanil desai um so he was he's a wonderful person as well he's helped me a lot he he was almost like a mentor to me um mm-hmm. and he also taught me about what value investing really is and mr um, desai sorry to interrupt you mr desai is based in india or singapore india india He's okay that's in very india. interesting yeah okay yeah so uh he actually quit his job to become a full time uh value investor i also have him on my podcast mm-hmm. um and i i'm really thankful to him because he gave me some early insights uh and he gave me lots of knowledge and then from there um you know i also started writing blogs um so a lot of them are outdated and i haven't written recently um but um i got to learn a lot from writing blogs as well because this helped me connect with uh, more people yeah and um eventually my dad um uh, put those blogs on a facebook post um and then from there i met a couple of people you know they live uh, some live in the us some live in we have a guy from ukraine we have a guy in canada um so all these people and me we all joined together and decided to have weekly value investing based meetings wow. on discord mm-hmm. um so from there we got to learn a lot as well it's still continuing so for two years now um we are meeting regularly every sunday uh, morning amazing time. yeah so um from there also i got to learn a lot because these are people who have been in this space for 10 15 years and then, mm. yeah i just enjoyed so so when did this idea of the book come about as was it a part of these conversations and you know it kind of built on to you know with your ideas and you thought okay why not come up with a book how did the idea come up um so it was more of um so it was on a sunday call um so we were just discussing um you know topics with each other and then uh over there uh, my father as well uh he's like why don't you compile all of the stuff you learned um, yeah. from all these you know great yeah. investors that i've mm. read um you know munger buffett um yeah. etc and and write a small book about it um yeah. and then um the people on discord uh, really like that idea as well because they thought i would get to learn a lot from that um because um in a way like people say when you teach someone else you learn a lot um so uh so i decided to so at first i was hesitant about it because i didn't really know how to write a book and mm. i thought it was too big a project for me to uh, embark on but then yeah. after some persuading by them and my dad i decided to go on and um, get a shot uh and then eventually i wrote a book um so and from there actually i actually got to learn a lot 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 more that i okay. wouldn't have otherwise Yeah, okay. So that's how it is. And what's the what's the kind of uh, content or what's the aim of the book that you you the reason I ask you this is this is a book that is essentially what I gather is a part of your conversations with the group that you've interacted with on weekends <coughs> your learnings and your sharing. So is the uh, you know as an audience standpoint would 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 young you know the young minds uh, who would love to get into the world of investment would that be a ready reckoner for them your book? uh yeah i think so but it's actually not really um the conversations that we had on discord it's more of uh basically i compiled um uh, checklists uh, yeah. uh mental models uh charlie munger speech on you know the psychological tendencies that we have and i took all the you know the great advices the great quotes uh yeah. how 
different uh, fund managers uh, look at yeah. businesses, how they analyze businesses, how they analyze companies, financial statements. And I distilled it into uh, one book because mm -hmm. this is stuff that I didn't know earlier. And if I okay. did know it, I would make a lot less mistakes. So I do think it is good for someone who's a beginner, but mm -hmm. I think you'll, it's, it's, it's pretty good for someone who's in their intermediate sort of phase as well, because I think it's a lot of um, stuff from the greats. So wonderful, wonderful. Can you share a few of your some uh, you know fundamental principles or key concepts that probably this book you know comes up with? Uh, you know what are what you believe are crucial for aspiring value investors to grasp? Um, so basically, Generally, yeah. The the main um, principles I think are common across all types of value investing. So for my book, I do emphasize on a lot of them, such as having a long-term framework, uh, um, looking at things from a long-term horizon, um, when there's a lot of short-term noise going on around the world. So I yeah. think that's, that's a great advantage a value investor can have mm. because you're looking at things mm. um, far, far ahead when other people are worried about what's gonna happen tomorrow, what's gonna happen um, you know, yeah. a few weeks from now. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, um, the idea of uh, psychology and its role on investing and the idea of mental models and multidisciplinary learning that Charlie Munger uh, uh, has come up with. And uh, it's basically that investing is, so, is not just, um, you know, looking at financial statements and doing maths and, yeah. and all of that stuff. It's a it's lot of technical stuff. Yeah, it's not the technical stuff. People have this misunderstanding, but yeah. it's, it's, it's much more of uh, really training your mind to think um, in lots of different ways about different businesses and really getting into the depths of a company and realizing whether it's a, a, a bargain or not at, mm. at the price that it is available for. Um, so for that, psychology is very important because we have a lot of biases in our minds that sometimes clog us from making accurate decisions, um, mental models as well. So in my book, I have like, I think a hundred or so mental models listed down. Mm -hmm. So um, these models are actually really, really helpful when looking at business um, because it can help sort of act as a checklist as well to cover up your main points about business. Um, and then I think the last thing is of course, learning from the best. So my book is basically based on that. And I think that if you stand on the shoulders of um, you know, the greatest people, the giants, then you can see afar. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. You know, can you actually uh, probably share with us uh, what are the most common pitfalls, you know, or the misconceptions, as they say, uh, what you probably observed among your, you know, among the beginners in, in basically in value investing? And how do you actually address this properly in your book? Um, so basically, a lot of those uh, mistakes were made by me as well. So, um, so in, I think around 2020, 2021 era, um, I bought a lot of, um, uh, bad companies as in, you know, not high quality companies, um, copying others without actually thinking, um, and then not knowing what I'm buying and then mistaking, you know, a bull market as my skill. Um, so those are basically the main challenges I had, the main misconceptions I had. And um, I try to clear them by saying that you actually do need to buy a very good uh, business over the long term if you want to do well. And that you, even though you can copy other people, you can't really copy their conviction. So uh, at the end of the day, um, the final decision has to be yours. If someone, say, sells the company um, a couple of weeks later, what do you do? If the stock goes down, what do you do? Do you add? Do you sell? Do you wait? Um, so that, and then not knowing what you're buying. So a lot of people confuse themselves by, oh, they know what the company does vaguely. So then they're like, okay, so this is what the company does. I know about the company, but that's actually not true. Um, so even Buffett says that he doesn't know up to 95% of uh, business models. Um, so for us, it's like 99.9% .9 of business models that we don't understand. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think that's a important skill. And the last one is, of course, mistaking a good market um, as your own skill when it's not really true because when it's a good market, everyone's doing well. And yeah. then when actually the tables turn, you realize, oh, those are all bad investments. I just got lucky. 
True, true. Yeah. Your, your pocket money must be of a very pocket money must be of a very different level, Ruday, right? No, no, I don't have pocket money. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So my question next, the next question to you is, you can you kind of describe your overall style of investment, investing actually? Uh, do you have a preferred type of uh, investing or you know investment or an industry basically that you tend to focus more on? Um. So. uh i'm more event based um sort of so i think that um you should only buy uh quality stocks when they are undervalued um and this was because um early on one of the mistakes i made was i used to just diversify into lots of sectors um and even though if they were like you know pricey or they were just bad sectors or bad companies in general i would diversify just because i didn't really understand um what to do and how to manage the risk um but i realized that what mangas said is actually very very true and what a lot of great investors say is very very true that you have to make um concentrated good bets um so basically that opportunities don't really come that often so um you have to there's no need to over diversify um and then also i don't really have a specific industry i look at um but i can sort of get a feeling you know when i'm looking at different companies whether i understand one or whether i don't understand uh one yeah. mm. and that's usually when you look at a lot of 10k's a lot of annual reports you know which ones you can actually okay i can sort of understand what's going on versus i know what's going on for this company so a lot of them are consumer facing companies or something that aren't too technical to industry yeah. right yeah so that's where i usually okay and what actually is the process of finalizing stocks for you and how do you actually you know uh, find those investment ideas uh, as a non professional um so basically i like to look around um so when i go to the grocery store or when i go outside my house um i like to think you know what companies make this uh is it a good business uh why do they make this uh yeah. how are they doing now um that kind of stuff and then i also like to look at the stuff i use why i buy them why i use them um what makes them superior to other products that are similar uh and then i also like uh tracking you know 52 week highs and lows um and looking at screeners or online news pieces of articles so i like to check all of that stuff once in a while but it's not i won't say it's very necessary i think if you just look around you can already get a bunch of ideas yeah. but i like to see how you know how the world's doing how certain markets are doing how companies are doing okay you know for any value investing with a uh, portfolio allocation is very very crucial right so can you elaborate your views on on portfolio uh, allocation because you know how you allocate your portfolio across different investments and how this influences your investment decisions is equally important uh, for us to know um so when it comes to portfolio allocation i generally uh, like to do a mixture of two things so one is uh uh stuff that i have high conviction for um so this is stuff like uh uh you know um how much i believe in the business um that's basically what i mean by that and then yeah. also using a bit of math um so i like using uh, the kelly formula because i kind of feel that when it comes to an investment um uh, over the long term the only two things that matter is the probability at which your success is going to happen yeah. and um the ratio of risk reward so uh, basically how much are the returns possibly for that amount of risk that you're taking um so i like using that because kelly formula is sort of like just multiplying probability with risk reward um also i don't um uh allocate my portfolio over many different industries many different investments because uh there's a high chance that it's something out of my circle of competence or um it's very difficult for me to track so many companies and so many industries but peter lynch did it so it's a it's a personal preference thing but i like to uh not do that okay interesting we we spoke all about your value investing your book but i'm very very keen to know Uh, how about studies how much of a percentage allocation you know if i use that right word comes in in your own life for you know academics and your school amount of time because you are focused on a lot on investment and of course you're working on the book as well 
So what's the component, uh, percentage component of studies for you? Um, so I actually think studies are very, very important yeah. in the sense, um, because I, I, I don't sort of, uh, neglect my studies to do value investing various stuff, because I think that, um, it is important to get a good education before you can, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, start doing other things. Um, so I think most of my day or sort of most of my year revolves around studying maybe if i had to give a number like 70 80 percent of it awesome um, yeah so i i need to make sure i because the difficulty now is you have to make sure that while you're doing other stuff that you like um your grades are not affected cool. so yeah that's my view regarding that and, and and another interesting aspect is you're learning indian music uh, through uh, i believe tabla uh, so do are you attending classes uh, for the tabla um, so I do tabla online. Um, okay. So I do classes online. Uh, okay. And how about handpan? Um, handpan is actually a course. Uh, so uh, master the handpan. I bought a, a course from there, and then okay. it's a bunch of videos that you can see and learn how to play the handpan. Oh, interesting. And you are also into badminton, football, cricket, like any other kid. So, uh, um, is that a, more on weekends or also the evenings after post school? Uh, sometimes it's evenings. So, um, in my school, we have um, CCA kind of things. So, yeah, yeah, extracurricular. Extracurricular, stuff. yeah, yeah. So, I have cricket um, as a choice there. So, for I think three days a week, we do cricket. Um, uh, in school, so from around four to six, so around two hours of cricket training, um, and then apart from that, football is 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 something I play during break with my friends or during recess, um, and then badminton and stuff that I do in the evenings sometimes or during Saturday Sundays weekends. Yeah, yeah, very 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 interesting, uh, uh, Ruday. Uh, so we're here. We have uh, Ruday Jhala, who is now sixteen, but remember. He started writing this book at age 14. That's very important. He is, as I mentioned, a school student from uh, Raffles Institution, uh, very much into value investing. But of course, like any other kid, he is into sports. He is into music and loves, uh, you know, uh, being a part of, uh, you know, uh, the student life, family life with his parents, of course. And uh, well, looking forward to his new book, which is uh, all set. And of course, we'll touch base once again. Uh, the book being called, titled Worldly Wisdom of Value Investment, uh, written by Riday Chala. Riday, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast, The Sound of Money. Yeah, um, I don't think I was too qualified to give uh, all this advice, but I do hope that you enjoy listening to me and that I could bring at least some value. Um, and also thank you for having me as a, as a guest. Yeah. Definitely. It's not about qualification, Riday. It's all about your, uh, you know, the interest at that such an early age you got into this uh, and you're learning and you're sharing those learnings. It's what makes uh, it more, all the more important. And I'm sure our listeners uh, will be more than happy to, you know, grab a copy of this book and get to know how a youngster at such an early age as, as early as 14 gets into the world of investment. And, you know, you come in at a time when country like India is, is, is really aggressively developing or almost there. And, you know, even in the number of rankings in GDP, and a book coming in from an Indian like you, awesome, right? Uh, what, a, what a time, right? So very, very best, uh, the best wishes, uh, not just on your book, but also your academics and of course your sporting journey. Uh, and uh, we'll look forward to you having on more of my episodes on The Sound of Money in, in months and weeks to come. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a great, great conversation. And well, that's Riday Jala from Singapore. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. And in fact, uh, one of my early conversations of 2024, which sets the tone for my podcast uh, for this year coming ahead. And uh, well, from me, Santosh Sirud and Riday Jala, thank you for listening in and subscribing to my channel, The Sound of Money. For now, bye-bye and take care.
The Sound of Money with Santosh Sirur.